Rub up your engines! Here we have one of the last of the good Tundras. It's a 2021 TRD Pro with the V8 engine in it. Specifically got it because he wanted a V8 engine. Now he just bought it a few weeks ago. He did have to pay a little over 60. Yes, they're expensive, but this one was made in San Antonio and he found it in Texas and had it shipped to the East Coast. He wants something that's gonna last forever, right? Watch my videos decided, why not? I mean, I like the color too. It's a nice gunmetal gray color. Now, this is the TRD Pro. So this is a totally loaded Tundra. You can even see, look at this, Texas buyer. <laughs> but it ain't in Texas no more. And it's also all the four wheel drive. And as you can tell, there's an awful lot of room in the back. In this case, it's for children and car seats, but hey, you can use it as a family hauler. A lot of people do. You're certainly gonna be safe in this because regardless of what the engineers claim, if you saw the video I made the other day about small cars doing horrible in the crash test, the new crash test that you're doing, this thing does fine because it's a big giant truck and your family's going to be safe inside. And it does have sunroof, like I say a lot of room in the back, these nice TRD seats, very comfy, and it is four wheel drive of course, it's not all wheel drive, you can change it, you can go two wheel drive, four wheel drive, alt the flick of a switch, turn it off, the dash looks cool, so let's turn it on. So we're starting up, yes, yeah, push start, that's the way things are these days. You can hear that V8 engine, and you can see it's got a nice dash, got a nice V8 rumble to it, got a nice big camera, and of course, it's smooth as can be. It's in gear, you'd never know. It's still got a nice big glove box. People with pickup trucks want glove boxes. It's got a real emergency brake, not this electronic crap. Go under the hood. This is why people buy them. 5.7 liter. Climbing chain, you don't have to think about anything. For the life of me, I don't know why Toyota decided to go to a V6 instead of a V8. People love these engines. They can run forever. They can tow forever. They're normally aspirated. They don't have turbochargers. Yes, they're gas hogs, but they're all gas hogs. And let me tell you something. I got a customer that bought a new one with the V6 twin turbo and when he's pulling heavy loads and towing, you know what happens is it actually gets worse gas mods than that thing would be towing the same way. For just cruising around they'll get a little bit better gas mods, yeah, but under a heavy load, pulling heavy things, filling the bed, they're gonna get even worse gas mods. The smaller an engine, the less it's gonna be able to be efficient towing heavy weights. My big trucks generally always had big engines in them. Now I just ask the owner, what doesn't he like about it? And he said, nothing. The three kids fit in the back. The wife loves it. Maybe because she can sit in the front and the kids can sit in the back. Sure, it gets bad gas mileage. He admits that, but that isn't why he bought it. He just told me he plans on driving it for 30 years. If somebody doesn't smash into it and destroy it, you know, it probably will, but it would take an awful lot. My grandson's Tundra. He's had friends borrow it drive it into the woods, run into trees, go in ditches. And yeah, sometimes he had to come and have it pulled out because <laughs> this is only two wheel drive. Now this is a four wheel drive one. So in that case, he could have just driven it out. Now, granted, this was in the woods in the field. This wasn't on the highway. If you want a big truck, that's gonna last. Yes, he paid a lot of money, 60 something grand for a used one, but it's the top of the line and it can basically last forever. As of yesterday, the average new car price, average in the United States, was $48,404. So he paid 14 grand more and got this. It certainly is an average, and it's gonna last a lot longer than the average car, that's for sure. You can see, it's got the serious TRD rims. Gigantic brakes on them. Now we're gonna do a good experiment because you can see, these are very aggressive tires, but he said his wife doesn't mind the noise, so we'll see what it sounds like when we take it for a spin. Now it certainly is nice and high, way down there in the ground. And like I say, you get a good view of the backup camera. You can see what's happening pretty easily. It's kind of hazy now because the sun's shining on it. This doesn't shake at all, but as you can see here, he's driving it in town and his tank average is 13 miles a gallon. They are gas hogs. And of course, being a big old truck, four wheel drive, it'll go over this hump with no problems at all. And I like the exhaust got a little bit of a rumble to it it's not too boring now so far i have to say and i'll shut up these aggressive tires don't sound all that bad yet we'll see what it does faster speeds you can see all the instrumentation is just where you want it tack to the right all the information you want in the middle and this is just a baby it's only got twenty-eight thousand miles on it so here we go to the v8 
famous intersection here where there's always a traffic jam. Nobody to the left of us. Nobody to the right. Yes, it does burn rubber. It has a serious engine. Let's face it, people want pickup trucks of V8 engines, and this engine does not disappoint. Not only does it have the power and the torque, but it lasts. I've seen these things having a heck beat out of them, and they're still going with 400,000 miles on them. And I do have to say, the tires don't sound that loud for as aggressive as they are. Fooled me, I thought they'd be noisy as could be being that aggressive, but they really aren't. As we take off again, Man, it just feels good, sounds good. Such a shame they only make them in V6s now. They just don't sound the same. They're just a different vehicle, if you ask me. When it comes down to it, it's just a big, classic American V8 pickup truck. Now, yes, it's made by Toyota, but this particular one was made in San Antonio. It's a Texas pickup truck. The times indeed are changing, and as I slow down, look what's passing us. An old Ford pickup. <laughs> Look at it. There's the past. This is the present. Not only was it made in San Antonio, Texas, but it came from Texas and it shipped up here to Rhode Island. So, what do I think of this thing? It's a phenomenal pickup truck. And to prove how strong they were, this owner used to have an L3 and it rolled over and then it rolled back up and he kept driving. It really didn't have that much damage to it. They're solid built. You don't mind the bad gas mileage? My advice is buy one of these while they're still later model used ones with low mileage like this around because guess what they ain't going to be making any more of them they're into smaller engines they're into all oh, the ratings for higher gas mileage but that's exactly what it is ratings not reality when you're carrying weight when you're pulling things or when you get one of these let me tell you you're going to be driving fast and this is the hilarious thing about twin turbos on paper turbochargers get better gas mileage because they ram more air in but that is if you're driving 30 miles an hour. Generally, when you have twin turbos, you step on the gas a lot, the turbos spool up, the engine revs up, air goes in, and your gas mileage goes right down the toilet. So unless going to church 30 miles an hour, the V6 twin turbo is not going to give you phenomenal gas mileage. I've seen them in the real world. They don't tow and get phenomenal gas mileage. People that drive them hard don't get phenomenal gas mileage. They're big, heavy trucks. It takes energy to push a heavy truck. You want a heavy truck that's going to last? Hey, get one of these. It'll be around for a long time when all the imitators are gone. I would put dollars to donuts. Who knows, I might not be around 30 years from now, but if I am, I put dollars to donuts that this sucker will still be running and a bunch of the twin turbos will be in junkyard land with blown engines, blown turbos, where this thing will still be motoring down the road. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Death Metal Junkie 420 says, What first car should I buy? I'm looking at a 2009 to 11 Hyundai Genesis 3.8, 290 horsepower, A's and 6 speed automatic, or a 2009 to 13 Mazda 6 S Touring Plus, 3.7 V6 with 272 horsepower and an A's and 6 speed automatic. I definitely go for the Mazda. The Mazdas are much better made than they used to be. The problem with the Genesis are they are zippy, they're fun to drive, but they're made by Hyundai. Their cars don't hold up over time, and it's going to be your first car. Do you really want a car that's going to fall apart and cost you a fortune to fix? Where the Mazda, hey, the parts are going to be cheaper for the Mazda because the Genesis is the top of line, so they charge more money for the parts, and the Mazda is just a regular car. But truthfully, I would definitely get the Mazda, especially as a first car. It's going to last more. It's going to cost less to fix. I personally would get a Toyota myself, but if you like the Mazda, go get it. Third Sox says, I want to replace the rear spark plugs on my two. 2003 RX300. I changed the front three, but I can't get to the back. My mechanic won't do it because he says he's going to pull half the car apart. Unfortunately, he got a 2003 RX300. And those engines are made that to get to the back three, you have to take the intake manifold off. Unless you're really mechanically inclined, you said you don't want to take it apart, you're going to have to find a mechanic who will do that, and they're going to charge you a reasonable amount of money. So price around in your area to see what somebody's going to charge. It is a job. It's a pain in the rear end. But that's the way that vehicle is designed. Now, you didn't see how many miles you got on it. What did the old spark plugs look like? If you compare them to the new ones, and there's a gap, you measure, get yourself a little gap gauge, measure the gap between the ones that you took off and the new ones. And if they're just about the same, you could leave the other ones in, because some of those plugs will last for a couple hundred thousand miles, and you won't have to take it apart. For example, if it's running perfectly now, and it doesn't miss far, you could probably leave it alone. But you go 
going to have to take it off if you want to change those plugs. There's no way out of it. It is a gigantic job. That was just one of the bad designs that they made. A lot of V6 engines are like that. You got no choice then. There's no way of getting them out without taking all that apart. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.